So we're out here with Dante Reese. How you doing, bud? I'm pretty good. I feel amazing. So we're going to talk today about your journey to coming to Southern California, leaving your hometown out in Philadelphia. Yep. By the way, which which city out in Philly? Uh, well, I don't need Philadelphia. Okay. Just on the northern section of Philadelphia. So. What high school are you going out there? Uh, Kip Boys Collegiate Academy. It's okay. Those charter schools out there. So, I mean, unfortunately, those, some of those type of schools out there don't give you guys as much exposure as you guys deserve, right? That's very true. So, there's a lot of you guys come out to Southern California, uh, play through the JUCO system. Yeah, opportunities. Can you talk about some of that journey? I mean, um, it's a pretty cool story that you got going on here, and I just yeah. want to make sure that everybody could actually see it, right? Yeah. Uh, so, that being said, you've been out here for, what, a year and a half? Uh, it's been pretty much two years, honestly. Almost two years now? Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's, let's kind of rewind then, and let's kind of reflect back and talk about the experience you had your first out, your first year out here. Yeah, summer 2019 is when it first started. Okay, so you transitioned from there and played at what you go? Um, San Bernardino Valley College. Okay. And that was the first year of 2019 when I first came out here. And from my understanding, you guys were uh, conference champions. Conference champions. We all uh, lost the whole game, but you know, it was unfortunate. Current events, but it happened how it happened, and I'm just moving forward from it. And now you're transferring out to one of the top Jukos out here in California, yes. College of the Canyons. Pretty excited about it, I can't lie. You're ranked number three. I know Marquise Hollywood Brown got out of that Juco. Uh -huh. You being a wide receiver, how do you feel being part of that core and being an impact player for that program? Well, if you ask me, I feel like it's going to put me in the place that I need to be, the people I need to see, the people I need to be around, the environment I need to be in, and it's going to just make me better. It's going to bring the dog out of me. How has Team Elite Athletics impacted your life into putting you in a predicament to chasing your dreams? Well, I, what I can say is Mr. Reyes, since the day that he texted me at three o'clock in the morning to tell me that he had an opportunity for me to come out in California and play football, I feel like since then, I, my eyes have literally opened. Like, opportunities, all it takes is for you to just literally take the first step towards opportunity, and after that, never look back. So and does I the program say, help you out with housing, transitioning out exactly. here, finding a location to live? Yeah, you literally set my life in stone. You know what I mean? When I say that, I mean, like some people don't even have a plan when they try to do things. I literally had everything in front of me that I needed. The only thing that I needed to do was literally just take the first step. Must feel great to have uh, players like Gerald Bowman, former yeah. SC, former Gino. Baltimore, guys from your hometown, yeah. uh, whom I actually had the privilege of playing football with. And uh, I mean, he reached out. That's kind of how you hit our radar out here in SoCal. You know, guys like that, they kind of just laid the blueprint for you and said, hey, vouch for you. Said, hey, this is the guy that needs to come out here in SoCal and right. and, and uh, get, take these opportunities. Um, obviously, Dante Juco is a long struggle, Absolutely. right? And you've, and you've now endured it. For um, on top of the fact that you're part of the generation that had to go with the pandemic. Yeah. So you had to really overcome a lot of obstacles. And that's kind of why I want to have you in particular in this interview. Uh, you've overcame a lot of the stuff that has really shed it off a lot of other people and made them yeah. quit the dream and whatnot. Um, Juco as it is, is already difficult. Struggle. Let alone having a pandemic, right? And having to deal with housing and all of us, all the impact that came with that. Exactly. So how do you feel? I mean, how did that impact your life? How do you feel now? I mean, are you hungrier? It made me come out way stronger. It made me fight for what I want because nobody's going to hand you anything. You're never going to get a handout. You got to work for what you want. You want to be the best, you literally got to go out there and do everything you can do to be the best. It's not going to be like, oh, it's one thing, one day it just happens. That's not how it works. That's literally not life. You got to work for it. That's just how I feel. I feel excited. I feel like this whole year and the whole COVID thing been going on made me a stronger person. And that's literally how I feel. And, you know, with you by my side, I feel like we could do anything together. How do you feel being a part of the Team Elite Athletics gym in general and in the aspect that you were here from the beginning and from the door opening up to, to painting and kind of helping everybody else with uh you know the whole building aspect of this well i feel like the gym has a good culture it's like a family vibe in here you know and i've been here training with coach Rez since i first came out here and first we started in this in his house in his garage and to see us come here and do all this is just like it's amazing to see because like i said well, whatever you can accomplish with hard work it shows like this is not this was not easy hard work with the turf these walls, banners, everything, all of it was hard work. And yeah, I feel, you know, really excited to be a part of it, to be honest. I feel like it's a blessing. I feel like God put me here to put me in a better place in my life. I feel like he connected us together so we can make some great stuff happen. So you're starting your sophomore year right now at uh, College of the Canyons. Yep. You're taking online classes. Of course. Good deal. Mm -hmm. How does that feel right now in regards to being all online and yeah. just doing things a little bit differently than the traditional JUCO route, which is already difficult? Yeah. At first it was a little discouraging because I'm like, 
I learn better in the classroom, you know, in front of people. I get to see people, talk to people, interact. That's just how I learn. But, you know, online is like, I feel kind of, I feel, it feels different because I can't talk to people as much as I can. I feel like I don't have as much help. I can't reach out to much people because sometimes it gives, you know, it takes a little while for them to get back to me. So, you know, it's different, but I'm still getting through it. Uh, you know, my family's depending on me. So I'm just like, I'm not making no excuses. I can't make any excuses. I just got to keep on fighting through it because that's what men do. You just got to keep on moving forward in life. Just keep working hard. That's all you can do. One of the things I wanted to bring up was how uh, during the pandemic, you know, you made this place your home physically at times, right? And I mean, you were in here doing three, four workouts a day and other kids kind of just threw in the towel or went back home. And some of the other guys actually had the opportunities. We won't put anybody out there yeah. to be here with you and continue to grind even harder and harder and harder. Um, but, you know, they kind of just quit. Yeah, they gave up. So how do you feel, you know, knowing that you were able to truly overcome that adversity in one of the toughest times in history? Yeah, it gave me, it did give me some confidence because that's something I did struggle with in the past. But me getting through all this and doing it with you, it gave me a lot of confidence in myself and realized that I'm stronger than I thought I was. And honestly, I feel good. It made me feel good to be able to deal with that with you. So, yeah, that's true. So here we are with, with one of the top wide receivers in the country, under the radar, mm -hmm. diamond in the dirt about to be in first round draft pick mm -hmm. all this cool stuff and i very you know very strongly believe that um man you're just a puppy still yeah we you gotta speak into existence a lot a lot to accomplish so it's really exciting yep. so we're going to continue to kind of just you know graph your journey as you're as you're growing in these years as you and uh and go from there what, what would you say to some of these young kids right now that aren't going to be going to that division one school right out of high school right um, and they may be a little discouraged, a little depressed because it's just like, oh man, the D1 dream failed. And they kind of go through your route, a route that, as you know it's now, not the easiest. it's not the easiest, it's not the fastest way, but it's a route that's still going to take you to your dream. All I can say is stay on the path. Things are going to get thrown at you and thrown at you to try to steer you off your course. But one thing you can say is stay focused. That's just to stay focused on what's important and remember the reason why you're here in the position that you're in. And it will help you throughout the whole way. Everybody doesn't get drafted or everybody doesn't get, you know, an offer out of high school. Everybody doesn't work like that. Some people don't have the exposure that they needed and it, it hurts them. But in the end, that doesn't mean that you're done. You can't just give up and quit. You got to keep on working for what you want because you will get it. If you don't stop, you literally will get it. You will get noticed and people will put you out there and they will help you. You'll be supported. So before we get off this thing, talk about, you know, you're thousands of miles away from home, away from your family, yeah. having to meet all these new people. Uh, which has kind of been a unique blessing for you, right? Yeah. So just speak about that before we get off, you know, off of this thing, and and uh, and just you know, touch some bases on that. Well, first of all, California is very diverse, and it showed me a different way of life, literally, quite literally. There's a lot going on here. You know, it's like 24-hour clock, never stops moving. It's hard to be away from my family, but you know, my family support me, and they realize what I'm trying to achieve. So they just help me as much as they can. And just like, they tell me to stay strong. They're my rock. Like without them, I would be nothing. Without them, I would have gave up by now. Nieces and nephews, my mothers, my sisters, my brothers, everybody. They just help me fight. They, they, help, me, they help me to stay strong. They do. It's been hard. It's been a battle for these two years, but that's what, it literally what keeps me going. I got, I got something to fight for. So find something that you, you know, want to fight for and just keep on going with it. I know, get better. I know you lost your father. Yeah, a few years back. And uh, it's been kind of a tough thing, and I know you wear a symbol of a resemblance around your neck. Yep. And uh, anybody that knows you knows that tough time, you know, when you think about that. Um, speak on how that motivates you. Yep. Well, basically I can say, everybody says you look just like your dad, you were just like your dad. And honestly, me speaking about it, I don't tell people about it, but growing up, I didn't really get to know him that well. I knew him a little bit better after he died, but growing up, I got to see him, you know, but. I could feel that that man is the same man that's in me now. And he literally is fighting with me. He's here with me. It's hard, it gets hard at times and all I do, I just feel the spirit around me. It gives me motivation. Literally, he gives me motivation. He is what made me. Literally, he is what made me and it helps me keep fighting. It's probably the one that gave you that freak strength animal <laughs> you got over there. You're like horse yeah. legs and all that. I, yeah. It's probably he, feeding you that helped. extra strength, huh? He helped with it a lot, yep. He's here with me, for sure. And he likes you. Good he deal. Likes you. Yep. yep, I agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Dante, we're going to let you go, buddy. Thank and you. I'm sure that everyone's going to be excited to continue to hear the next update for you. It's been a pleasure, yes. Thank you. All right. All right, buddy. Thank you.